It's yet another Seattle overcast day here in Tampa. No real rain coming out of this, just chilly and gloomy. Uh, but I'll take that over desiccating, drying, low humidity air like we've been having. Here's the Francois Giron V that I've rescued from a little bit of rooted cane I found in the mulch when Mermaid came down. It's quickly going into new growth. You can see the base of the cane's fat. Here's a nice side shoot coming out. For some reason lost our focus there. In between all the arugula here, we've got roses and buried waterwise container gardens, uh, five gallon buckets, Fairmount Proserpine. The Sofrano is sending out a beautiful flush of new growth. And what I've discovered, as I guess because of the large amount of organic matter in each buried bucket, I'm, they're benefiting if I give them a nice jolt of nitrogen, either animal feed grade urea or an Recently, I had some high nitrogen lawn fertilizer. I bought a broken bag of at Lowe's about a year ago. Dissolved some of it in rainwater in this bucket. I forget the analysis. I think it was like, I don't know, 23.3, and I've used it very judiciously, and the end result has been some very positive developments. And I want to show you these. Just a quick little visit here. This Duchesse de Brabant it was one of my earliest trials of growing a rose in a restricted range container. In this case, it's simply a tree pot, and I'm pretty sure I plugged the holes up with used uh, plastic grocery bags. But you can see there's uh, beautiful new buds and blooms, tons of buds all over it. And this definitely followed my having given it a jolt of the high nitrogen lawn fertilizer. And also some homemade fish emulsion that I make when I get fish scraps at the beach. I let them ferment with horse manure tea for a few months and then bail it out. And this rose benefited from both. Now over here, we've got the teasing Georgia that I pillarized a few weeks ago. It's already uh, being clothed beautifully with new growth. Lots of buds. There's one there. Here's one here showing color. New growth everywhere. And I figure in about two to three weeks, it'll be spectacular, both in terms of foliage, uh, but also blooms. Another very positive development from uh, the high nitrogen fertilizer was on this Rev Ore, which is in a four gallon water-wise container garden I planted, I believe, about a year ago. Take a look at that beautiful flower. Blooms all over the place, buds all over the place. This was a very small own root plant I got from Chambly's. Back in the 90s, when Tampa was wet and there was literally no water restrictions, Rev d'Or was a rose I could plant for customers uh, that would be so vigorous. I even had one customer one time complain uh, that it got so big so quickly. Uh, but here in South Tampa, years of drought, I kept losing it uh, in the ground. But in this buried water-wise container garden, it is obviously prospering. And I can't believe how quickly it's gone up this rebar. Now over here is another example. This is the very first rose I planted in a buried bucket. It's a tea called Madame Antoine Marie. I purchased it from the Antique Rose Emporium as a drought resistant tea. It survived out here on its uh, own roots in the ground okay. Uh, but several months ago I dug it up, put it in a, I believe a four gallon water wise container garden. Same thing, I gave it rainwater uh, with nitrogen recently. And you can see all the new shoots coming up. It's a tough, reliable tea, and the blooms and the foliage remind me very much of the enigmatic pink cracker rose of Florida. Here's some buds and blooms coming up now, but you can see the abundant new growth coming up after the nitrogen push. Then over here, lastly, oh, there's my new dog, Cracker, yelping away in the house. He hates to be away from me. This is the uh, Mystery Rose Barfield White Climber that Patty Barfield gave me, sold me several years ago. You can see I've got to clear out the hell of that god-awful morning glory that thankfully got frozen back and re-exposed the uh, structure. But this is the bloom. This is that rose that has completely smooth canes, uh, remarkably smooth canes, extreme vigor, rapid, rapid growth. And when the blooms first open, if you tease them open in particular, they have a very potent myrrh or anise fennel scent, which baffles me because I associate that with the Ayrshire roses in cold climates. Um, there's a number of rosarians have contrib contributed ideas as to what it might be, including uh, some polyanthus 
uh, that had some um, Ayrshire rose in the breeding. I can hardly wait to get this side of the yard cleared out from the mermaid hell and the morning glory hell. Again, the, uh, a morning glory to never grow in Florida is called a pomia, epimia, however you pronounce it, acuminata. I paid a pretty penny for it mail order, not knowing uh, that once a mermaid kept me out of my yard, it was going to take over like kudzu. I like to focus on the fact that I've exposed this much of the yard, have this much of it planted, and now when I look back at the remaining hill zone, I, it's like I feel like I'm halfway there. Just one last look at Rub Door, one of my favorite roses. And again, I'd say the lesson for this is at least in these conditions is that my roses are responding uh, very much, very positively to a, not a strong nitrogen input, but some. This is a newly planted pink cracker rose. It's been in that five gallon bucket. Actually, this is in a seven gallon bucket for maybe a week now. Uh, I also gave it a nitrogen push and in a year's time, it should largely occupy this whole corner. That's it. Wish us some rain, y'all. Bye-bye.